Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, so we're starting this series of Ask Dr. Carey. And this is because I get, it's, I don't know how many emails every week um, from either aspiring wildlife biologists, current wildlife biologists. Um, and so this is a Q&A. So send me your questions and maybe I'll answer it um, on our channel. So, okay, this question is from a student. So this student said, I decided to get my degree in biology and figure out the rest later. I hope this course, she's talking about my wildlife conservation career course, provides information about different jobs for someone with an undergraduate versus graduate degree that could fall under the conservation category. Please advise. <clears throat> For example, are there possible internships that could get my foot in the door and information to help me narrow down a career goal? Well, now this is a question. And this is, <laughs> this question was answered in our wildlife conservation career course for her. But I'm gonna give you a little snippet of my recommendation for this. Um, one of the biggest questions are what jobs exist? Um, can you get a job with a degree, an undergraduate degree, or do you need a graduate level um, degree as well? And it, my answer is, of course, it's going to depend. Yes, you can get a job, right? But what that depends on are the relationships and the work you put in. Now, would you get the job just because you have the degree? No. You need, the degree is a given. Um, you'll need the degree, but it's everything else you do during your time of getting that degree that's going to really open up doors. So yeah, there are different qualifications, um, but as you probably are aware, the conservation job market is just flooded, right? So even though it has minimum requirements, say the minimum requirement is a master's degree, you're typically having several PhDs and postdocs applying for that same position. This is not to discourage you. This is to tell you that it takes more than the degree itself. It's all of the other pieces that are so critical during your academic career that will really set you apart and put you in that 1% category that gets the position. My biggest advice is that you have those relationships built already before you apply for the job. And in my course, I tell you how to do that. Um, but how you do that is you get out there and you make those relationships, you put in the work, you reach out, you offer something unique, you offer your willingness to do the grunt work for as long as necessary. I did that. Um, I still do that <laughs> and I wouldn't change it. So that's my advice is, yeah, you can get a job right out of um, undergrad and yeah, you can get a job right out of grad school, but you also can be unsuccessful in getting those jobs as well, even if you have the best credentials in the world. And that's because there's other pieces and core principles around what support that degree. You know, that degree is a one line, check, they have it. It's everything else, right, that you need. So the answer is yes, you can get the job. But will you get the job? Depends on the other things you're doing to support your, um, you're showing your, not just your passion, but as I like to talk about a lot, is your evidence-based commitment. So what are you doing to show that, what you're doing in that field to show you're, you're ready to put in the effort, not just, I have my degree, that's not enough, as you probably know. So my answer is yes, we get different jobs, um, <clears throat> but you need more. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. Um, so the second question, oh, sorry, there was one more part of that question, and that was internships. Um, do you have recommendations for internships that could get my foot in the door? Any information to help me narrow down a career goal? So let's just talk about internships for a second. I recommend, actually, you need internships um, to be successful in this career. Now, I don't want you to think of internships as just a check mark. Internships serve the organization or person that you're working for, but they serve you as well to figure out if this is what you want to do. So you're really trying to niche down and find that unique path, that unique, how you can share your, your unique gifts 
internships are your way to explore that. So don't just look at it as a check, like a checkbox to get to you, your dream career, because I challenge you to not be so rigid about what that dream career is. You might not even know it exists yet. So do those internships to serve those organizations that you think you want to work with. Perfect. Do that. But also do it as a way to be open-minded, to think about, is this the kind of career I want to do? So it's your chance to explore, to dive all in. Even if it turns out like not what you want to do, having answers about what you don't want to do is just as important as defining what you do. So um, my recommendation for internships is, yes, applying for both local, national, and international internships. And knowing that it's very common that you have to pay now to do these. And um, I do support that. I actually did that. Um, because it's also just, they're putting in their time to train you on something. That's an investment of you being there. It's not just volunteering and helping. You are, but it's an investment in their time too. And it's the process of this field and, you know, I did a year-long internship that I had to work full-time on the side at the Smithsonian, and do I regret it? Absolutely not. Now, do I wish there was a different system? Absolutely so, but this is going to set the 1% apart that's really going to pave paths in this career field. So do the internships. Um, so you can apply for existing internships. Another way is to reach out to places that you want to work with, organizations, people, etc., and offer them your services as an internship. So it doesn't even have to be in existence yet. I've done that too, and it's beautiful. Um, you need to really figure out their pain points and see where they need help. And then you offer, and it's only if it's true, if you can actually do that. So they don't actually, some of the places that don't post internships don't have the time or resource to invest into somebody to training. But if you have something to offer that you know that they are struggling with or could use help with, and it may not be what you ultimately want to do, but it gets you into that organization and just shows you your passion and your mission, your commitment to their mission, whatever it might be you build that trust, that relationship. And then when there is a position that is in more alignment with what you want to do, they already know, like, and trust you. So um, that's my answer to uh, internships. Do them, apply to them, but don't be afraid to um, create your own. And I get into that in our conservation career course too, if you want details on how to do that. Highly recommend it. Okay, the other question. So another question is a result from a student that reached out to me just yesterday. And I feel like it's very important topic for everybody listening. And it's um, when the question was, when is it time to pivot? When is it time to leave a position? Even if you really like love the um, overall idea and goal of it, when is, when is it time to leave? And so, of course, there's a lot of follow-up questions to that. But one of the questions, and, and I know that this person was hurting and feeling um, a bit like they've outgrown it and that it was uh, a little bit toxic to their health. And whenever the health comment comes in, that's the clear indication it's time to go. It's actually past time to go. And that can be hard to do, and I've had to do this too. But if you don't have your health mentally, physically, emotionally, you, you can't deliver or serve to your best ability anyway. And I think the bis biggest obstacle of people deciding to pivot or change jobs or um, career paths is feeling that they're letting themselves or that organization down. Now that's not true. Like you've already learned so much. You've already served in such a beautiful way that it's time for that chapter to end. So instead of like, you can definitely mourn it and be sad, but maybe it's because you've grown so much and now your time to, you've outgrown it. And it's a disservice to yourself to stay in that position. If you feel like you need to be in an environment where your light can shine in a different way. 
Now there's sadness to that, but I challenge you and ask you to embrace that because that means you're open to a new journey that your light's going to shine in a different way. And easier said than done. I know that. Uh, but part of, you know, what I do and why I'm here in the, the course is, is to have this support when you're at these obstacles, just sometimes you need a coach and somebody to support you that's been through it and um, have a community around that to support you and to show you the beauty in the sadness. <laughs> um, I've done this many times in my career, right? Feeling like, oh, shoot, ah, it's time to pivot. I love it. I love the mission, but I know I have a different way to serve. And so I just, when you feel that, when you feel like it's a toxic way to your health, to your thinking, it's time to go. And it's no disrespect to the organization or the people in that environment, right? You're just at a different place. It's not a good fit, either value system wise or um, you've just outgrown that. And so embrace that and then be open to your next step in your journey. You don't have to have it completely defined. Sometimes when you leave a position, especially in conservation, because we are very um, passionate about what we do. So it can feel like a, a relationship, like you feel like you're breaking up with it almost. And so if you need that time to heal for a while, to fully accept what you think is your next step, that's okay too. So if you need to move into something different for a while, to really focus on your health or your relationships or um, to give your, your mind and heart a time to heal before you are ready for that next step, you can do that. You should do that. I did that. And what it did is it just fired up my soul even more that I knew 110% my next step was, yes, to sell everything I own, pack my cats, <laughs> get into my Subaru, and drive to Nebraska out to Virginia to the Smithsonian to volunteer for a year to get my foot in the door. I could only do that because I had that space in between to heal, right, to reflect and just fire up your soul for your next step. So, all right. That's my Q&A for today. So if you'd like to send me your, your questions, it's just info at kerrymorfeld.com. And I'm here for you at every step of your journey. Um, the world needs you to show up for you, for wildlife, for our planet. And we can only do that if you're in alignment with how your light can shine. So I hope to help you do that. Okay, bye, baby.